Welcome to the Potter Blog site. February 19, 2014, New Mexico. The Department of Energy has whipped your lungs with 36 trillion, with a T, plutonium atoms since Valentine's Day. This is a picture of the WIP site. That's DOE's uh, Waste Isolation Pilot Plant handles Department of Defense uh, plutonium and radioactive materials. Uh, we did the calculation. Uh, basically, we took some values that have been reported by uh, Zach Ponce. Let me show you who Zach Ponce is real quick. He's done some excellent work at staying on top of this. He's the energy and land reporter for the current Argus in um, Albuquerque. And we took his values that we received from him over Twitter, uh, did the math, and what it comes out to is if you were there, half a mile northwest of the plant where this air sensor was located, you would have inhaled 36 trillion plutonium atoms during this time frame. But what about the people on site? What about the people at the plant there that first evening? Well, we calculated out, and we'll see it down here, uh, the hours for one Becquerel dose is 3.6 .6 hours. Now let's look and see what that means here. That means is According to normal breathing rates and assuming uniform distribution, a person would have had to been on site for 3.6 hours to have inhaled 1 trillion, with a T, 1 trillion plutonium atoms, one of which would have released an alpha radiation particle inside of his or her lungs during that time period. Now, the DOEs have said that there's been no contamination. They previously said there was no contamination above ground. Um, there have also been some very weird unconfirmed reports that are much worse than this from uh, swipes, and we've covered that in a previous video. But uh, we suspect this was a radiation explosion that occurred down here in these tomb areas. Uh, they were referred to as panels by the Department of Energy. Uh, panel 6 and Panel 7. Panel 6 just closed. Panel 7 just opened up. 6 is closed because they filled it. Now what we did was, is we dug through uh, Department of Energy materials uh, through this plant uh, to see what's happened recently there, assuming that the paper trails would, of recent activity might give some indication of what's going on there. And what's happened is, is that they recently closed uh, Tomb 6, as we call it, and as part of that, what they're trying to do is come up with a newer, cheaper way of sealing off these tombs. Uh, here's a picture of the old way they sealed off these tombs, an explosion wall and a concrete monolith. Uh, what they're trying to do, and what they may have already done on uh, panel 6, is, is they put in two steel bulkheads and fill it up with uh, loose salt. Now, if this doesn't look like a recipe for something that can trap uh, hydrogen or methane or volatile organic compounds and cause an explosion, uh, we don't know what does. But uh, let's get back to those uh, volatile compounds, methane and hydrogen. What they've tried to do recently is change the rules so that they, so they no longer have to test for the, pre for the presence of hydrogen, methane or VOCs. On top of that, as we said, they're trying to implement, implement a cheaper way of sealing up these radioactive tombs. And what this means is, is and especially if you look at this trail here, you know, three days before this radiological event, there was a transmittal request for information pertaining to estimation of gas generation rate of some remote handled TRU mixed waste streams. Uh, basically, TRU stands for transuranic compounds, uh, uranium, plutonium, neptunium, americium, so forth. Uh, remote handled is because these particular ones are so radioactive that people can't touch them. And they happen to also be mixed in with other, with other wastes, other hazardous wastes. So what they do is, is they pack these things into a small cube, shove them into a drill hole in the wall, and try to seal them up. But since these are extremely more radioactive than the low-level waste, 
the radiation tends to break down the products inside there, the other hazardous materials, causing an increase in release of hydrogen, methane, and volatile gases, and all sorts of evil crap. And that is where we suspect the explosion came from. And based purely on what we see going on here and the vulnerabilities they discuss in this plant. Now we have a whole series of uh, detailed information here that you can find on our website from the uh, uh, Federal Register to their discussion of why uh, the uh, hydrogen and the methane are dangerous and how they could explode. So that is our best estimate of what happened. Now the most concerning thing about this is that it's unlikely that the DOE website has air filtration systems capable of surviving such an explosion. Because they don't really expect these explosions to happen during processing. So things could be a lot worse there than is being let on. And the number of people who actually know what's let on and what's going on is actually very, very small. People who are doing the actual testing. And since this is a defense def uh, department place where they uh, dump defense department nuclear waste, the situation is a matter of national security. So when it comes down to it, is you can't believe anything that's coming out of these people. And even when they are telling the truth about stuff, their definition of safe and your definition of safe are two different things. Their definition of safe is, is that when you come down with lung cancer, they have enough plausible deniability that you can't prevail in court. It's not that you won't come down with lung cancer. It's that you can't prove it directly in court because it's a statistical population based event and not always directly tieable in. So if it doesn't kill you within two weeks of exposure, they basically consider it safe.